Understanding Human Factors in Transfusion, Part 2. This video expands on the introduction of human factors in Part 1. It is recommended that both videos are viewed to gain a full insight into this topic. Since 2016, SHOT have used the Human Factors Investigation Tool and this asks staff to score 0 to 10 under each category as being key factors identified during incident investigation. There are four categories and these are staff, environmental, organisation and government and regulatory factors. And over a third of incidents were scored for a single contributory factor and the vast majority of these were given a score only for the individual staff member. Over the four years of this study there has not been a major change in the distribution of scores given to the four human factors, although the trend across the three years is to assign slightly less responsibility to the staff members, especially if the educational material has been used. This reminds us that incident investigation should be thorough, systematic and identify systemic issues. The Dirty Dozen refers to 12 of the most common human error preconditions or conditions that can act as precursors to accidents or incidents. These 12 elements influence people to make mistakes, and these are certainly compounded by staff shortages, so it's imperative that we have adequate staff to ensure safe patient care. We recognise that adequate staffing can be problematic to calculate and is, there is a simple staffing capacity template available on the SHOP website. Capacity plans should be reviewed regularly and updated for any changes in workload or training requirements. How do we embed human factors and make a difference to patient safety? Fundamental to ensuring safe transfusions is building user-centred processes, applying human factors principles in designing systems. In years of shop reporting, we have learnt that there are different elements to a safety culture. Five critical elements have been identified for an engaged organisation with good safety culture, and these are reporting culture, an organisational climate where people readily report problems, errors and near misses. Just culture, an atmosphere of trust where people are encouraged and even rewarded for providing safety related information and it is clear to everyone what is acceptable and unacceptable behaviour. Flexible culture, a culture that can adapt to changing circumstances and demands while maintaining its focus on safety. Learning culture, the willingness and competence to draw the right conclusions from its safety information and the will to implement major safety reforms. And questioning culture, it is vital to ask what if and why questions. Questions are the antidote to assumptions which so often incubate mistakes. To move forward we need to have all of these steps. Staffing, adequate staff, good skills and experience mix. Design user-centred processes and clear SOPs. Redesigning education and training. Investigating incidents, learning from near misses and systems thinking. A just and learning safety culture with growth mindset, staff engagement and psychological safety. And above all, shared learning is required. While the primary focus of these videos is to provide training to staff, we must remember why we are looking at human factors to reduce errors. As SHOT consistently reiterate, improving transfusion safety is at the heart of everything we do and underpins all haemovigilance activities. The patient is also at the core of everything we do and consent listening to patients and applying the duty of candor where appropriate will develop a safety culture by allowing patients to be active partners in it and not simply passive recipients. Human factors driven errors in transfusion have been identified through years of shop reporting due to processes and practices and these can include complex SOPs, complicated processes, stretched resources, cognitive bias, change blindness, alert fatigue, situational awareness 
and these factors can all result in deviations. To take one of these examples, complex SOPs, here are some simple steps. All clinical and laboratory standard operating procedures must be clear. So they must be clear and concise, logical and meaningful, easy to follow and effective, always workable and simple, and realistic and relevant. Another example are IT solutions. Schott has repeatedly demonstrated the persistent adverse safety consequences of the failure to achieve intraoperability. The intraoperability of systems both within NHS hospitals and between NHS institutions remains limited and is held back by a lack of standardisation of data formatting and data exchange. The reframing of safety has major implications for the way we design our systems and the role of people within them. These affect everything from our approaches to incidents to quality improvements to the way we train and lead teams. To truly improve patient safety and achieve these concepts, we must learn not just when things go wrong, but also from what goes right, which is in the majority of circumstances. We are reasonably good at reporting and using the data to inform improvements in practices, but we do not do enough to acknowledge continuing excellence in transfusion practices and should include a chapter on learning from excellent practices. This is about being curious about the realities of daily work and learning from all events and recognising and building adaptability in the healthcare system. It is about appreciative inquiry and building resilient teams and systems and embedding learning from excellence into practice. To find out more about Human Factors and SHOT, please visit the SHOT website where you will find SHOT Bites reports and the Human Factors tuition package.